What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lockdown Universe, home of the bizarre, peculiar, and unheard of stories of UFO legend and lore. And today we've got a great one for you. It comes out of Ireland, and it involves a man who encountered aliens who told him that the world would end in 850 years. So this story comes from a website called howandwise.com, and it talks about a retired carpenter. His name is Jerry Battles, who is age 65, and he states that he was abducted by aliens when coming home after Christmas drinks in Palaskenry, which is a village in a county of Limerick, Ireland, and this occurred the night after Christmas on December 26, 2001. The aliens warned him that the Earth would end by an asteroid, which is the size of Munster, which is a city in Germany, uh, which would occur in 850 years from 2001. So we've got 19 years less than 850 to go. I think uh, we're all, <laughs> those of us who are here right now, don't have to worry about that too much unless you're taking some magic elixir I don't know about and you're going to last another 830 years or so. So in 2016, Jerry told the Limerick Post what happened to him back in 2001. He stated that the sky was very clear and it was beautiful on the night he was abducted. It seems to be the case. There's a lot of cases where there's moon, you know, beautiful moons out, uh, starlit night um, on the nights of abductions. I wonder if there has anything to do with the clarity of the night and aliens' ability to find people. But he states you could have read a book with the light of the night sky. And he stated that it wasn't like a surgical light. It was like this beautiful ethereal light. And he stated it was around 8 p.m. when he was returning home from the Seven Sisters pub in Kildemo when a strange light coming from the end of the laneway took him to the spacecraft. Now, I love that, that name of that pub, Seven Sisters Pub. I wonder what the background is into that story. But what's really interesting is when he got onto the spacecraft, he remembered that there were 40 males of different ages on board. And they were all in a subdued state, standing shoulder to shoulder, just like mannequins and not moving. The man standing next to Jerry was wearing a Columbo-style coat and hat, and he felt himself, himself in a state of paralysis. So Jerry could only move his eyes, but he was one of the very few, if not the only one, that could actually move his eyes and see other people standing next to him. He states that after that, he found himself floating in another chamber, but bigger in size, with a 360 degree view, and that was the place where he first saw his first extraterrestrial. He only remembered seeing the alien's big conish-like head and his beautiful, quote-unquote, ginormous eyes. The alien talked to Jerry through telepathy, and said to him to not be afraid. He said, I'm not. Should I be? And the next thing the alien asked Jerry was, what would he like to see? And Jerry thought, well, it's Christmas time. How about the North Pole? Let's check that out. So the alien fulfilled his wish and took him to the North Pole within seconds. Jerry compared the incident with a Star Trek film uh, that he stated was very similar to it. He stated the people laugh at him when he, when he reveals this fantastic story to him, but he assures them that he never had any history of mental illness or any other issues. Now Jerry claimed that the alien had told him that they, they are, their civilization is, four million years more advanced than humans, and that they've been observing us for thousands of years. Now just imagine that for just a moment. Let's think about humans for a moment. Think about the past 120 years. We've gone from the invention of a car, previous to the car we were riding horses, to the development of rockets that could take us to the moon, personal computers, cell phones, and all kinds of technology. And when we have MRI machines and all kinds of very, very high technology and in just 120 years, imagine what these aliens must have if they're four million years more advanced than we are. So they've been observing us for thousands of years, and Jerry states on 
Stephen's Night, 2001, the alien warned him that an asteroid the size of a monster, which is a city in Germany, would originate from the 35th quadrant and would end our world in 850 years. Now, 19 years have passed since that message was given to him. And the next message from the alien is very interesting. He states that in all that time, you have only excelled at two things. Your species has only excelled at two things. Global warfare and lying to your own species. Now think about that for a moment. Global warfare and lying to our own species is the only two things we've excelled at. This alien must really not have a high uh, high viewpoint of us. I'm not saying that humankind is necessarily you know the most spiritually advanced species out there, but I think we've done more than just only excel to global warfare and lie to our own species. But to their spirituality, we must look like you know we're we're pretty dismal. Uh, we're not very sophisticated. So the alien goes on and, and states that you have to. Uh, become, you know, in in connection with the universal force that, you know, if, if you get in contact with this universal force, which is for good, you might be able to bring humanity out of their, you know, abysmal state and uh, maybe be able to get out of the problem in 850 years of being demolished. So according to Jerry, the alien told him that the government and the banks tell lies to people because they have a hidden agenda and then we should not trust them. He also forewarned of an impending global financial crisis and told me that if we do not change our ways, we're going to end up like the dinosaurs. So that's really interesting too. We're going to end up like the dinosaurs. There's a lot of theories about what happened to the dinosaurs. I have a podcast early on probably in the first 40 podcasts, where um, I discuss uh, one of the whistle government whistleblowers talking about how the dinosaurs actually disappeared. Um, and it was actually due to, according to the whistleblower, due to um, a war between a reptilian race and a human-like race. And the reptilian race blew off this massive, massive weapon to destroy um, the planet and basically, you know, basically all life on the planet so that the humans, human species wouldn't be interested in it anymore. Um, and that's why the dinosaurs, according to the whistleblower, passed away. But that's neither here nor there. Going back to Jerry, Jerry states that um, he did not remember how he was abducted and he had no memory of the incident until he found his coat that he had been wearing on that day. He found the coat weeks later on top of a regional hospital, on the rooftop of a regional hospital, and he had no idea how it got there. After he received the coat, his memory of December 26, 2001 started to come back. Now, the article doesn't state how he got his coat back. I wonder if somebody went up to the rooftop and they found like his wallet in there or some identification in there and were able to uh, find out who the coat belonged to. Now, what the aliens also conveyed to uh, Jerry is that, according to him, the aliens state that they use dark matter or dark energy to hide in the universe. So, this is a really interesting statement, and he doesn't tell us exactly what the aliens look like, although in this article, he does have paintings behind him of kind of like tall grays. Um, so, I'm not sure if those are the aliens that he met. However, it's interesting to me to hear him state that they use dark matter or dark energy to hide in the universe. I could see if he meant that they use dark energy or dark matter to uh, transport themselves throughout the universe or to use as an energy field, but to hide in the universe sounds like nefarious, right? It sounds like, you know, like some sort of malintent. And so it makes you wonder what exactly they're using this energy for and why they would have to quote unquote hide in the universe. Now, if they were using it for, you know, beneficial purposes and not hiding purposes, but like transportation, you know, that would be that would be more acceptable. But uh, we know that there's lots of ambient energy 
in the world all around us. Tesla talked about it, many scientists have theorized about it, and that there's this ambient energy field that's all around us that we can tap into if we have the right technology, and that's kind of what zero-point energy modules are all about, right? You hear about them in Stargate, and you hear about them from these theorizing scientists, and that some people even state that whistleblowers have talked about this and that it actually exists out there and we have the technology so that's a really interesting point um, and something to, to to chew on as well so I like this story I like that it comes out of Ireland I don't get to hear too many Irish stories um, <clears throat> and it's it's interesting that it happened right around Christmas time um, and that this is the first alien experience alien encounter that talked about humankind's actual time of demise um, and it's interesting that it would be some sort of like meteor asteroid because almost all the alien encounters that we've heard of from like the aerial school encounters to many individual abductions have stated that humankind has to change our ways that we have to change the way that we you know interact with our environment that we clean it up that we stop using fossil fuels and whatever the case is to save our planet. In this case, it doesn't seem like it would matter so much because if an asteroid comes, it would just destroy the planet anyway. So I guess the question is, is this story true? Is it not? We don't know. Maybe this is one of the only species that actually gave us the truth. Who knows? Nonetheless, it is a very interesting story. I enjoyed it. Um, it had a lot of different detailed pieces into it um, and one of the really fascinating things is he was standing side by side next to 40 men uh, in this spacecraft and we have heard of other abduction stories where people have seen other humans on board there have been darker stories about people seeing human body parts on board so that being said you know what do you think about this story do you think that there's pieces that are true do you think that the entire story is true um, or do you think it was just a drunken night in Ireland? We don't know, but um, many people believe he's he's accurate and truthful and honest. He definitely has some painted pictures behind him in the in this uh, article. I don't know if he painted them, but he could have. Um, but it's it's interesting, and to put yourself out there, well, you don't have a whole lot to gain <laughs> by putting out a story like this. Um, so you kind of open yourself up to ridicule and that kind of thing. So anyway interesting story. So I hope you guys are taking care of yourselves, taking care of your physical health, emotional health, spiritual health, following through on your hobbies and your goals and your dreams, and always continuing to question the universe around you. Until next time, guys, take care, and Lockdown Universe out.